Hi guys, for many years I've been interested in the notion of uh, producing gas uh, HHO um, by uh, separating uh, ordinary tap water into hydrogen and oxygen and I suppose the first time I did it was uh, as a, as a schoolboy with a battery in the kitchen sink and um, uh, I know that if I use um, stainless steel plates um, that uh, this produces a satisfactory result so I'll be putting positive and negative onto uh, uh, the two stainless steel plates um, but um, I'm, I've had a look at some other things and I know if I use two copper plates uh, and sandwich them together and um, put the DC onto there I, it, produce an, it produces an oxide which uh, ultimately stops the current from flowing and I just want to have a look and see what happens if I mix uh, or when I mix uh, copper and stainless steel. So I've got uh, two little sets of plates made up and um, on uh, this one I've got the positive onto the stainless steel and the negative will go onto the copper and then on the other plate I've got the positive onto the copper and the negative connection will go onto the stainless steel and uh, I just want to have a look and see yeah, what I'm anticipating I haven't done this yet but what I'm anticipating is that uh, one of them will produce a satisfactory result I've got uh, a, s a small container of water and then this uh, little DC power supply so I'll, um, I'll take the first one with the uh, positive connection to the copper and pop that into the water so um, I've got amps and volts uh, say so I haven't tried this before so we'll just switch that on pair that up no limits um, take that up to 30 volts and you'll see the the current is diminishing there um, don't know what that started off at but it's dropped down to one amp now and, we're producing some gas bubbles and it looks as though we're producing I'm sorry it's probably too close it looks as though we're producing some scum there between the plates already and um, so that's with the positive to the copper and the negative connection to the stainless steel. So my initial reaction is that that would be unsatisfactory. There's very little in the way of uh, 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 gas being produced. Interestingly the current is coming back up again. Um, okay so it, it's variable but um, there's uh, quite a, a lot of um, it looks like verdigris the uh, green gunge that you get off copper um, coming out into the water let's take it back over the top Uh, this has gone up to 3 amps again and uh, so I've gone into voltage limit now um, well sorry into current limit and that's that's bringing the voltage down so it looks as though I've actually got a short circuit across the plates or a very close to a short circuit across the plates um, so I guess that uh, that material is uh, is conductive. In fact, uh, interestingly, I've got something I haven't seen before. 
I've got two types of uh, scum or oxide as the bluey green um, from the copper and then as the black material um, which uh, I'm not quite sure what those two materials are maybe somebody will, uh, will put me right there I've washed out the container and I've got the uh, the next pair of plates and here I've got the uh, negative uh, to the copper let's pop that in there so again this is current this is voltage uh, the outgassing now is uh, quite respectable there and uh, it's looking clean what I'm interested in doing uh, this for is um, materials are available in different sizes and maybe there's different products that are more useful and uh, the idea of being able to use uh, copper um, is uh, you know possibly quite desirable um, uh, in some ways uh, but we can see how uh, how there's a, a significant difference it's producing um, uh, essentially clear water there's uh, the gas in the water uh, but there's none of the oxides coming off So that's exactly the same um, uh, type of water, it's just tap water and um, that's, that's interesting, well I find it interesting, I hope you find it interesting. I have uh, 15 volts and 3 amps and that's running into a, a current limit because that's the, the limit of it. Okay, so that's all I wanted to look at at this stage was what is the effect of using dissimilar metals uh, in um, such a, um, uh, a device. Remember, if you do use dissimilar metals, you are subject to dissimilar thermal growth. Uh, so that um, would mean that effectively you've made a bimetal strip. So if these were clamped together, uh, rigidly they will actually start to uh, bow as uh, one material expands more than the other. Um, what I will do is I'll open these two packs up just so as we can see inside them. Oh just uh, out of interest I always love this bit I'm a little bit tempted to put some um, washing up liquid here and make some big bubbles but I know if I do it'll splash water all over my workshop so I'm going to resist that until I'm playing outside. So this is the uh, the pair of plates that got fouled so remember this is with uh, the positive to the copper so the electron flow is from the stainless steel to the copper. Um, oh wow, I've not opened this up before. <laughs> now then, what you're seeing there, that lot was developed in um, seconds and really the, what you've seen on the, uh, on the video is about how long it took, it was probably a, a few seconds that uh, the camera was switched off while the cell was still running. Um, but I'll get you close in. What I forgot to say was that the spacing between the uh, the plates in both cases uh, is one millimetre and that's a one millimetre nylon washer that was clamped down and, and uh, get this so uh, there's a little reflection and you can see this uh, this build up on the copper uh, which is the green, the verdigris 
and then um, on the stainless, if I could avoid it. Very hard to video a shiny surface. Uh, on the stainless, we've got this black material. So essentially black off the stainless and then green greenish off the copper I say that's as far as I want to go at this stage but I, I have some ideas and I just wanted to start by doing that well that, that would go with the big bang wouldn't it I wonder if I can get that Ooh, wow <laughs> my ears are ringing now I shouldn't have done that this is that uh, second pack I've undone the nuts but I haven't opened it up yet and in this case you remember I've got positive onto the stainless steel and the negative that's just fallen off was onto the copper and as I open those up uh, both are perfectly clean so I haven't done anything to those so reasonably um, one could make a cell with um, uh, a stainless steel plates on the positive connection and copper or presumably any other material um, on the negative that's any other conducting material uh, on the negative okay that's as far as I wanted to go in uh, this video um, I hope you found that interesting oh but I should say is um, this this pair I left running for about half an hour whereas the um, uh, the, the other plates are only run for uh, probably less than a minute before they uh, became fouled uh, what I will do for the next uh, trials is I shall be uh, fixing the uh, stainless steel plates uh, into a pair so that I'll be running the uh, the two stainless steel plates with uh, a one millimeter gap and then what I'm really interested in um, is uh, different ways of applying voltage to the plates but that's for sometime later in another video